Welcome to The Driven Entrepreneur, where we sit down with visionaries, trailblazers, and entrepreneurs and discover why and how they do what they do. We'll get the backstory, plus plenty of life and business lessons along the way. Here's your host, Matt Browning. Hey, this episode is brought to you by my very own NLP practitioner course. I've been teaching Neuro Linguistic Programming, or NLP, for nearly 15 years. It is the most powerful tool for communication on the planet, and it can be yours today. For a very limited time, I'm giving away my entire NLP course workbook for free. Go to nlpwithmatt.com. All the patterns, all the tools, and the techniques of NLP in the complete course workbook, the same one that we use to teach our live certification classes, yours free. NLPwithmatt.com. Get it today. Let's get back to the show. Hey, welcome back to The Driven Entrepreneur. It's Matt Browning, and you know I- I'm here. It's another beautiful Friday. Uh, as you're getting this show, it is time to jump in with some mindset and some training aspects of the entrepreneur journey. And I couldn't think of anything, anyone better to help us to understand about the power of discipline, the power of training yourself, the power of good habits, and really how to succeed in your business than a military drill instructor. So I have brought on someone I'm hoping to become very good friends with as long as uh, he's nice to me, uh, Matt Kuchera, who's a 12 and a half year Air Force veteran. And he spent his time in the military, not just seeing the world, but really training the next generation of service. He's a master military training instructor, which means he's molded over 82,000 of the United States men and women for amazing world-changing roles through the Air Force. Um, He has done so much more between, you know, master's degrees and working on a doctor of technology program through Purdue. Um, He's now pivoted out of the military uh, into the civilian life and done that very, very effectively, which I know can be challenging to say the least when you're so used to one world that's very different um, getting back into civilian clothing in in the civilian world so we want to talk about that and all that and more and how to pivot successfully not just from the military but really the year of 2020 has been a year of pivot for so many of us so without any further ado matt kuchera welcome to the show how you doing my friend Hey, Matt, thanks. Great intro, by the way. It's going to be hard to uh, fit my head in that that drill instructor hat I was showing you after an intro (laughs) like that, but thank you. And you're not a drill instructor, right? You're a master military training instructor, I heard. That's right. So in the Air Force, we call them MTIs, military training instructor, and then we have uh, variations of that training. Uh, You have the training variation, you have the master instructor variation. So there's, there's a couple different roads you can go down when it comes to career development and personal growth in in the field. Well, before we get too far, could you paint a picture real quick of, you know, when I think military training instructor, drill instructor, I always come up with, um, um, was it Damon Wayans? From <laughs> yeah, the movie he was in, Major uh, Pain. You're thinking Major, of Major Pain, Pain, right? That's right. <laughs> and that, that dates, I think, both of us for our age. But I think about Major <laughs> Pain, and it's always, you know, it's the Marines, it's the Army. You now you're part, of course, the Air Force, which is a very important uh, branch. Um, we're doing the leadership training at the Air Force Academy at the end of the year, which is a super exciting moment and time to do that. Um, for you, can you describe a little bit about what this is like? I know it's it's an eight week boot camp. What is is it really that way? Do, are you tearing them down, building them up? Give me just kind of the insight into what is camp like for eight weeks and what was your life like in that time? Yeah. So, I mean, I think what's cool is going from being a recruit and my very, you know, my very first day, every single one of us, and they call it the gateway to the Air Force because every single one of us will go through Blackland Air Force Base and, and do the basic military training experience. And it varies, uh, you know, when I went through it was six weeks, when I got there as an MTI, it was eight weeks. They've bumped it down to seven. I think now it's six and they, they go back and forth on all of it. So it's somewhere between six and eight weeks, depending on what the uh, demand is for the different types of training that you need. Uh, it's intimidating. If you think about pivots, your very first pivot that you make into the professional world, if you're going into the military, is you're going from being a civilian, knowing not very much about military life and then stepping foot into this 
environment that is very intense, very, uh, it can feel hostile. It's, it's there to set the, the stage. You are now part of something that is much bigger than yourself. And from the first minute that you're there, we're going to teach you the cultural values of the organization, both globally and later in training functionally. So it's really important to make sure that the recruits understand, we call them trainees in the Air Force, so the trainees understand that, hey, you're safe in this environment, but by no means are you in charge of this environment. We're going we're gonna to take you through it, and we're going to turn you into an airman of the world's greatest Air Force. That's really what we're, we're selling while we're down there. Uh, and of course, not everyone makes it through. Uh, some people don't want to don't want to pick up what we're putting down. And the the ones that do go on to do these incredible things, that, you know, across the world and really impact not just our organization, but impact communities and and countries that are looking for the U.S. to have a presence and want us to to do good things for them. What are some of the biggest aspects of a, a personality or habit or attitude that you see in the, cause I, I never thought about the pivoting side. We always talk about like vet pivot, like your podcast, that pivot, great podcast, by the way, guys. Thank you. Um, we always talk about pivoting like out, like, Oh, I need to, I was in the military. Now I'm going to go out, but there's a huge pivot of coming in. What in your mind or what have you seen through 82,000 uh, trainees with some of the bigger mindsets uh, habits, attitudes, et cetera, that were, I don't know, let's go wrong, that worked maybe in civilian life, but don't work when you're going to be an elite airman in the military. What had to change? What are some of the patterns you noticed with 82,000 trainees? Yeah, look, I mean, when you have that kind of a reach on the number of people, you really start and you're taking them through the same program, right? So you really start to see patterns of behavior, you really start to understand and you're in this uh, laboratory of leadership where you're learning, you know, if I, if I pull a little bit on this heartstring, maybe I get a different result. You're just kind of always changing your approach to see what the end result is and fine tuning, refining the product. Uh, the patterns of behavior that you're going to see coming from everyone. And the biggest one that I always had a, uh, you know, I guess my eye on was the finger pointing, you know, always looking at what other people are doing instead of doing what it is you've been tasked to do. And that is the hardest concept for recruits to grasp uh, early on in training is a hey, you like you don't you, what you do is not the most important thing that we have going on. And it takes, you know, we have flights of 60 trainees it takes all 60 of you to get this mission accomplished. So you may be doing task A. Don't worry about what person with task C has going on because their task is different and it also contributes to the mission. Do you feel like people recognize that? Like, do you, do you feel like people recognize that up front? Like, do they know they're doing that? Or is it so ingrained in behavior that it's like, that's just how life is. Of course, I'm going to talk about whatever's going on around me. And they didn't really realize the pattern. Yeah, it's ingrained in behavior. I mean, if you look at society today, we're constantly comparing. You know, if you go to the gym, you're comparing your results against, uh, you know, another, another person's results. When you go to work, you're comparing, you know, your results at work and how productive you are at work to, or you're being compared to your peers. It's, we're always in this state of comparison to other people. When you're in the military, we can't compare. We don't have time when the mission is happening. We don't have time to compare to each other, we have to just be better than the enemy, <laughs> be better than the task at hand so that we can get it accomplished. And that's really one of those things that you have to break. I, I, you know, I would say another pattern of behavior that you have to break, and this ties into discipline, is you have to break the little things, you know, the little personal desires that people have. You know, if you have an itch, don't scratch it because you're standing at attention and formation, not allowed to move, right? So that's, it's really taking it down to the very granular level and saying, no, you're not in charge. No, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do what you want when you want, right? We, there's a cadence, there's a rhythm to everything that we're doing right now. And it's teaching you that you have to be a team player. You have to be, uh, you know, 
I guess, invested in what's best for the organization rather than what's best for you. When you're standing at attention and you're in the middle of your boot camp, the idea, because I've seen this again, portray, portray, portrayed in movies, right. TV shows for my entire life, right? Like so many people have, but I've never experienced it. I always imagine, you know, you see this, you have to stand at attention. And as you said, if you have an itch, don't scratch it. Yeah. So that would be a very minute example of a principle. And the principle is your itch is not more important than the group's formation. So is it about being able to sacrifice the desire you have today for the people around you, for the mission, right. for the future? Is it all those things? And do you find that principle is something you still use today outside military? Absolutely. You know, we, as we grow in our military career, we're, we're, we're really blessed in the Air Force to be exposed to, uh, you know, leadership training that is really advanced. It's, it's something that you would expect from a master's level program where they're teaching you how to lead other people. And it needs to be advanced because in some instances, we're leading in highly stressful situations. Um, you find out that being a leader is about service. You, so what you're doing is already military service. You're serving your country. But when you become a leader in the military, you're now serving those who you lead and making sure that their needs are met. It's never about you at any point in your military career. I think as you transition into or pivot into a civilian role, it's important to, to highlight that as well. It's not about me. It's about the team that I serve. It's about understanding my role in the organization and how I can best fit in and, uh, and help support other roles or be a good supporting player for the overall objective or investment that we have going on at the moment. So those are, those are characteristics and qualities that when, when military personnel carry that into the civilian workforce, you're really bringing a, an asset that's not common in, uh, in that environment. So it becomes this highly sought after and well-recognized thing that the military people have. You know, it, it's, it's, it's such a, for me, I wish that I learned the power of sacrifice and discipline earlier in life. Because having never gone through the military, I got into business, you know, for someone else, I had into business for myself. And one of my, like, call it presuppositions or assumptions about life, my, my beliefs were, you know, yeah, if you work hard, you'll succeed and you want to succeed and you want to create things. But I never noticed that under the surface, the pattern was always about me. There was a selfishness. And I don't mean that negatively, like I didn't care about people, but selfish meaning I focused on me and I, how do I succeed? What do I need to do to get the things that I want? And two of the most powerful lessons I've learned in the last probably 10 years is the power as a leader of sacrifice of saying it's good to give up something for myself to honor and help someone else it's good to give up the thing i want to do as a husband to honor my wife and give her something today and the power of discipline what would you say is maybe the principles that have been most useful and important for you in civilian life in your marriage in your business wherever you want to go with it but yeah. of all the principles from your military time, what do you say that this is the most transposable? I can use this more than anything and more people need it. <laughs> I think it's character. You know, it's, it's character. It's having the restraint. When I say character, I mean, you have the restraint to, to put aside those personal desires and, and recognize how to value people for who they are. Well, let's define character a little more then. Cause yeah. that's almost a vague enough word that, yeah, like everyone has their own picture in their mind when they go, yeah, I want to have character. So help us understand what's the picture in your mind of character? Sure. So you're dependable, uh, you're trustworthy, you're hardworking, you are someone who, who shows up and puts in an honest day's work, you care about your personal product, and you care about your organizational uh, direction. So you're willing to be a player on the team. You don't have to be the, the star player. You're just willing to be a player. And you're willing to, to fill gaps in 
uh, weak performance areas for that team as well. So if if the team is is particularly weak in a certain area, you're willing to adapt and be flexible to fill that weakness, or you're willing to uh, you know come up with a solution where the team can can fill it together. Uh, if, if that makes sense. So you're constantly yes adapting yourself to the needs of the team and the needs of those around you. I think that that is extremely important. And it's been really valuable for me to, uh, you know, when coupled, when those concepts coupled with discipline, when I say discipline, you know, I've noticed in my civilian career that there are people that have a really hard time not saying the first thing that comes to their mind or not providing, not refraining from providing some harsh criticism or feedback. To me, there's this there's been this assumption that people are inherently trying to get one over on the organization and coming out of the military i've i find it really difficult to sign off on that i think people want to do a good job and when given the benefit of the doubt given them an opportunity to explain and understand that it's okay if what you know I'm speaking about specific things now, I think at this point, but I think it's okay, right? When someone says, hey, you know what? Uh, Yeah, I miss this deliverable or the product's not up to the standard, right? Instantly assuming that that person is not up to the standard is, is a downfall of the civilian workforce. Asking that person, hey, what's going on? And, and just put the task aside, whatever it is, it's below standard, put it aside. Just ask them what's going on. Hey, how's, how are things going in your world, you know, outside of work, everything okay at home, everything good, you know, in your personal life, are you doing all right? Because once that person understands that you care about them as a person first and the task second, then they'll start to trust you as a leader and know that you have their, their best interest in mind. They may give you something along the lines of, Hey, actually, no, I, you know, I had a big fight with my wife. Uh, last night and yeah, I didn't sleep very well and that's bleeding over into work. Are you going to really penalize them for that? Or are you going to be understanding and say, okay, well, how can I help? Well, if you do understand, it's like your feedback is different too. Yeah. You're not, you're not looking at this pervasive problem of they don't know how to do the task. Right. So I don't need to spend any time giving them feedback about the task at hand. I need to give them what, like compassion, encouragement. I need to let them know I care that's going to build the person up. And then the next day they'll be able to do the task better because they actually got cared for. Does that sound 100% something you'd agree with? Yeah. 100%. You know, I months, a couple months ago, I lost my dad unexpectedly. Uh, This was after probably two weeks after. Yeah. After we met in San Diego at the beginning of March, uh, at the end of March, uh, my dad passed and I went on my week long bereavement uh, that I get from my company and I come back and uh, I was just instantly met with this, you know, hailstorm of of negativity about the stuff that didn't get done right the week I was out, and that really set a tone for me inside my head. Now, discipline and uh, restraint allowed me to take that in and come back another day to have the conversation uh, when I wasn't emotionally charged about it. That's that's the type of thing. You don't know that you don't know what's going on with that person. There's been other instances where I've corrected my manager about, uh, you know, a comment that they've made about another, uh, about a peer of mine. So we don't know what's going on with them. Maybe they had, you know, maybe they're having an internet issue. Maybe they're having to, you know, stuff like that. Let's, let's give them the benefit of the doubt before we, we cast them off as this, you know, this poor performer. Yeah, that's really good. And and I I love the kind of the encouraging aspect of, you know, people before performance. Yeah. And like, that's what I'm really hearing from you. Um, Let's talk a little bit about, I mean, uh, specifically about pivoting. I mean, this is what this is what your podcast is about. Um, And I know that from the military world, pivoting to civilian world, there's challenges that come with that. There can also be victories and there's resources to bring. One of the things that I think is really important, and I want to focus on this with you, is the resources. I I, So pivoting, I call that context. Like you're in one context going to another context, another who, when, where. So from the military context to the civilian context, or, you know, you're in the 
in business now through 2020, you know, I went from say the live event context to a virtual training context. You're changing. Yeah. When you're changing context, one of the most powerful things is bringing resources cross contextual. So taking a resource from one area, bring it to another. Could you speak a little bit to kind of what are some of the resources that usually aren't in the new one? Like, how do we pivot and how do we bring that resource with us, even though it normally maybe doesn't fit in the new context or isn't normal in the new context? Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, I think if I understand correctly, you know, it's what are some of the, what are some of the the skills and uh, areas of expertise that you can transfer over? Uh, We call it, you know, the military calls it a skills crosswalk. You know, how how am I going to take what we do well in the military and define that as something that's needed or create a need for it in a different industry. And yes, you know, in, in the, the military, here's what we do well, right? We're really good analytical thinkers. We're very used to doing things with less. Okay. You're on an, you're on a fixed budget when it comes to the amount of resources that you have available to you. You may only have, you know, the task may, may call for 10 people, but you only got a team of four and, and you're going to have to figure it out because it's got to get done. We're very uh, adept at, at coming up with solutions to problems that given the amount of resources that you have available to you, the average civilian would probably look at it and say, no, this, this is impossible. It can't be done. Well, we'll find a way because we have to. Um, you're getting a team player, you're getting someone that's loyal and, and devoted to the mission. And what that means is if you can, during, you know, onboarding with a military, a new military uh, hire, if you can onboard them and really convey to them what their global and functional purpose is within the organization, you're going to get someone that is steadfast and driven towards making sure that that aspect of your business is going to be successful. Um, really good. Yeah. I, and I think that those are, those are two probably really key points when you, you know, when you talk about what, what do they bring? The other, the other one I'll say is every single, every single one of us is used to leading in high pressure situations. I mean, we, we've, the military does a really good job of sharing the wealth when it comes to pressure cooker situations and leadership. So what you get used to doing is making a call and sticking to it and owning it when it's wrong and, uh, and passing the praise when it's right. Uh, and what that, you know, to kind of beat that home a little bit more, if, if I, if I make a call as the leader and it's the wrong call, I'm owning it. It's my fault. It rests on my shoulders. Everyone else is a good follower. They're just doing what I told them to do. Even if you had delegated it, even if a team member had made the choice or did the thing, I see that a lot, right? right. The leader says, hey, that's my responsibility. I did that. Yeah, you're going to fall on the sword. Even if technically you didn't, right. yeah, you fall on the sword. But you flip it around, and when it's positive, you go, hey, I got a great team. They did a phenomenal job. That's right. It's understanding. Yeah, it's understanding that, it. you know, as a leader, <laughs> the team's going to go the direction that you tell them to go, Right. So that's why it's your fault. No matter what they do, they're going the direction that you told them to go. They're, they're following your intent or your direction. And at that same time, when that's correct, you didn't get there on your own. So as a leader, you're kind of in this place and, and you just learn to, to accept it in the military. You're in this place where, yeah, okay, we got there successfully. Good job, team. We're on to the next one. And, uh, and when you don't, get there successfully. It's like, Hey guys, sorry, I let you down. So that's a very powerful presence. You have something that I think is very absent. And a lot of veterans have a really hard time finding managers that are worth following in the civilian world because they don't have that attribute because there is this emphasis on me. Yeah. That's, that's really well said. Yeah. And and without, without again, tearing someone down, it's like just the, that character principle of, pass the praise and take the criticism. Yeah. 
it's so because like in the corporate world, it's like, how do you climb the corporate ladder? There's a piece of it. I, I talk about this a lot when we get into leadership discussions and seminars and live workshops about the organizational principle of, of certain, say, organizations. And a lot of like the achievement based, you can get promoted when you do well. One of the flaw is a powerful system for a lot of reasons. But one of the flaws in that organizational principle is the attention. Yeah. That everyone's attention is focused inward and on themselves rather than on the client experience or on the environmental concern or even on profits for the company. Right. It's all about, hey, I need to find a way to get my promotion. And everything I'm going to do is based on what I'm going to get, not me doing my part to help this company move forward. So I think, that, I mean, it's so, so powerful to see a manager or a leader that's able to bring that resourceful state of just what you said, falling on the sword and passing the praise yeah. into every other environment. Hey, Matt, uh, as we are starting to wind down here, there's a couple more questions for you. Number one is you have been awesome and so much insight and wisdom from a guy that you know has spent well over a decade training thousands and thousands of, of men and women to serve. So I want to say first off, thank you um, from my heart and thank you from all of our listeners for the time and the sacrifice that you put in, you've given a huge chunk of your life, yeah. the time on your earth, and you've given that to all of us for safety. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. It's been my pleasure. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> well, I can also hear that from you, which is pretty cool when you get to do both. Um, how do we find more about you? How do we follow you? I know you have some great Facebook and Instagram stuff. Um, tell me about you got an awesome vet pivot sticker in the back and you got the podcast. So go nuts. How do we stay connected with you? Absolutely. So you can find me uh, anywhere. It's at Vet Pivot. Uh, at Matt Cuchera is a, is another one. So I, you can find me anywhere on the uh, on the socials. Uh, if you want a free sticker, on your pivot.com forward slash welcome. Sign up for one of our mailing lists. I'll send you a sticker in the mail. Uh, we'll also reach out to you, contact you about uh, you know veteran hiring about industry pivots about uh, how you can participate in our 100% absolutely free pivot panels where we're talking about industry pivots for folks that are going from the military into different industries or from one industry in the civilian side to another. And it doesn't matter if you're going from banking into, uh, you know, software development, if you want to go from tech into, uh, you know, utilities, it doesn't matter what you're, what you're doing. If, if you want. Or how about going from a corporate career to starting your own business? That's a huge pivot. Exactly. Corporate career into entrepreneurship, you know, one thing that the podcast, which you can find at any uh, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, uh, Vet Pivot has has brought me is this extensive network of folks who are in the the industry transition onboarding talent acquisition space, and it's been a lot of fun getting to know them and allowing them to share their expertise, their knowledge, their network with. Uh, with the listeners and with the folks participating in the live panels. Final question, Matt. This is going to be my new question of the year. Mountains or ocean? You know, that's a good question because uh, it finds me in a in a place of contemplation at the moment. If I could work from home and work anywhere, uh, I've always been a mountain person, but I have been looking at property uh, in Galveston, Texas, uh, just because I vacationed there one time and I was like, you know, this place is actually really... Uh, really nice and and peaceful. Uh, but I'm going to stick with mountain. I'm going to stay with mountain uh, for the training opportunities for lakes because I don't like the wind. Uh, you know, lakes are more still than uh, than ocean breezes. So there you go. <laughs> very insightful. I'm a mountain guy myself. So you you're going to get this podcast episode released. Very good. Um, you passed the test. Thanks so awesome. much, Matt. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. All right, guys, that's the show this week. Well, thanks again to Matt Kuchera of Vet Pivot. Um, just, I mean, this was packed. You know, we didn't get into a lot of story in this episode. And I think that was great because we had so much uh, value and resources to share. So make sure you go check out ownyourpivot.com forward slash welcome. Grab a Vet Pivot logo sticker. I'm looking at it right now in the back of his wall. It's pretty cool. It's got this like uh, fighter jet going in. It says Vet Pivot on it. It's a great thing to put on your MacBook. Great thing to put, you know, on your uh, your headphones, wherever you want to put those stickers, you put those on and show your love for the vets in your life. 
if you are a veteran, if you have a veteran in your life, make sure you show them some love and definitely direct them to listen to the Vet Pivot podcast. And you can find that anywhere you get podcasts because, man, there's not a lot of skill sets more important than pivoting. And Matt Kuchera is a master at that. So thanks for listening. You can follow me at Matt Browning on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. If you haven't rated and reviewed the show, if you listen to this, course in your car, make sure you head over to our on-demand platforms, iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, all those places. Go find a podcast player and go download and you can get an archive of well over 200 episodes of The Driven Entrepreneur. We have some phenomenal guests in our archive. I have some great solo teaching episodes about state management, goal setting, you name it, we've talked about it. And they're all free, no paywall. So go check those out on demand if you haven't already and download a few extra episodes. Thanks again to Matt Kuchera. And this is Matt Browning, the other Matt saying, get out there and stay driven. See you next time.